Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to another installment of our DI 101 webinar series. If you haven't joined us for one of these before, I'll tell you that it's, a, it's an exciting resource um, for our customers, associates, and even for our, our uh, manufacturing partners. Um, our goal is to um, deliver informative presentations about industry trends, new technology, um, applications and uh, new products and so um, we're excited to have you all here today we um, are very excited to have uh, one of our key manufacturing partners uh, in thermal ceramics um, parented by Morgan Advanced Materials um, we are pleased to have them here talk about a, um, a new product in the for uh, for fire for um, a new fire protection passive fire protection product that they have going on um, it's really exciting, and so they're going to talk about um, the uh, the use of fire rated duct wrap for uh, grease ducts, and, um, and and how that applies, and some testing requirements, and why those products make sense, make sense, and, um, and talk about the latest development and product offering that they have. Um, I'd like to introduce um, our presenter, and then uh, another panelist from um, Thermal Ceramics. We have David Keyes. He's the business development manager for uh, building and construction. He holds a bachelor's of science in ceramic science and engineering from Penn State University, the uh, Nittany Lions. He is a sales representative for thermal ceramics. He has participated in code cycle meetings from NFPA 96, IMC and IBM, and has given, given continuing education courses to distributors and contractors and engineers. Uh, and inspectors uh, in numerous states on the design, installation, and use of fire-rated blankets. We also have Scott Higginbottom. Uh, he is an application engineer for thermal ceramics. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering from the University of South Carolina, Go Gamecocks. He has a Master's of Science in Mechanical Engineering from Georgia Institute of Technology. He brings 30 years of experience working as an engineer in the ceramics and glass industries. Scott has worked in passive fire protection with Thermal Ceramics Morgan Advanced Materials since 2016 and represents them at ASTM and the International Fire Stop Council. I want to thank our presenters and uh, our, our, our friends at Thermal Ceramics for their time today. With that, I will, uh, well, before I turn it over to David, I do want to just tell everybody how we will be fielding questions. If uh, there is a questions tab in your GoToWebinar control panel, so you can just simply type out your questions and submit it through there at any point during the webinar. And what we'll do is we'll um, take some time at the end of the webinar to go through and answer those questions. With that, I will uh, turn it over to David with Thermal Ceramics. Okay, good afternoon, good morning, good lunch to everybody out there. Uh, David Keyes, Given a presentation, as I said, with a uh, Scott Higginbottom in the uh, background for support later on. And if there are any questions, uh, Scott or I will take them at the end as Jared tells them which what they are. So really, uh, thanks for joining us. What we want to talk about today is the use of fire rated wraps on, you know, on grease ducts. Uh, in general, why they're being used. And a, uh, for us, we've got a new product which bring it out. It's a uh, black, lightweight, and because of the uh, the decrease in the weight and the density of the product, it's much easier to install than what we've had before. So basically, we are going to be talking about the a uh, little bit about Morgan, you know who we are, and uh, Morgan Advanced Materials, the history and the evolution of the grease duct wrap products in the marketplace part of the code language on really why everybody's required to use this type of product in grease duct applications introducing our newer product the it's black lightweight as i said and much easier to to install its features and benefits i've got some uh, q a and the uh some key takeaways at at the end followed by questions so these are the, this is myself, and this is, you know, Scott Higginbottom, as Jared had said earlier. Uh, I've been involved in 
the passive fire protection for thermal ceramic slash Morgan advanced materials for better part of 20, 20 plus years now. And Scott supports us, as Jared said, uh, in the technical end of it, he gets involved in engineer judgments and uh, testing for the codes, uh, compliance, laboratories, he is intimately involved in the new product launch that we've got going on here now. So what we really want to talk about is a uh, thermal ceramics, all the different products we manufacture, but specifically just the grease duct. But uh, what thermal ceramics actually is, is we manufacture an extensive range of high temperature insulation products and systems for, for, for thermal management in high temperature environments. Uh, we've got over 36 manufacturing sites in five continents. Uh, engineering services to develop the state of art solutions for your specific applications. And our products are renowned to keep their uh, customers, especially those operating energy intensive processes, to reduce energy consumption, environmental emissions, and operating costs. Uh, on the right hand side, you see a couple squares of the different products that we have to offer in that high temperature range. But mostly fiber, ceramic fiber, insulation types of products. We've got some vacuum form shapes, castables, uh, moldables. This right bottom left hand corner is the actual wrap. For grease ducts, we're going to be talking about that application boards and some insulating fire bricks. So Grease ducts in commercial restaurants. Uh, that's really the application that we're gonna be talking about today. This is not grease ducts in residential homes. They're quite different, but uh, in the restaurants, they've got the uh, back in the kitchen where they've got the grill and the fryers. You've got the hood above the, the grills and fryers to take the fumes and the, the grease effluent out, outside the building. And it's, it's in the exhaust duct work. And really what ends up happening is the you're cooking you're cooking your burgers uh, they're frying there's moisture there's grease coming off it and as the moisture and grease rise with temperature they caught by the hood and exhausted through the through the system uh, the grease will have a tendency to precipitate out into the ductwork as it's leaving you know, as it starts to cool down yeah. And what ends up happening is if these ducts aren't cleaned out, they're going to, it's, it's sooner or later, it's going to ignite, going to cause a fire. And inspectors, insurance companies, home, the, the business owners are not real happy about fires in a building. So the codes have been developed to prevent these fires from spreading if they do incur with, within the duct itself. So what you're looking at here is this is actually a restaurant. Uh, in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, I had taken this picture probably five, six years ago or so when we got a call to come take a look at it and see what we can you know, say about the project. But well, you've got the restaurant here and it's a uh, it's total disaster. This thing was totaled to the fire along with the adjacent building next to it. And this is the, the hood right here. Everything's all bent, very high temperatures metal. But what ended up happening is you've got these fires and duct work, which can pretty much can take down a building if, if they get hot enough and there's no preventative actions to you know, keep the fire from spreading. So what you're looking at here is this is an actual grease duct that they that's been you know cut in half, sliced open, and this black mucky material at the bottom of the duct. This is actually condensed grease. From, a, uh, from the burgers, from the fryers, from well, whatever the cooking material they, they've got. Uh, and this is fuel. This is really good fuel. Uh, it's pretty much just like a creosote on a, in a, a building up in your chimney. And if you don't clean it out, and the spark eventually is gonna get up into that thing and it's gonna go off like a Roman candle. It's just gonna be super hot. Uh, the codes basically have requirements for, for how to clean the ducts, but they don't really tell, they don't really have a frequency of cleaning in the ducts. So uh, a lot of restaurants, there's services out that will come around and will clean the ducts. Some restaurant owners don't do it on a frequent enough basis. The grease builds up, a spark gets in, gets into this area, ignites it, and then you've got, 
you've got a roaring fire inside the building. Okay. So the grease fire is actually, they, they happen a lot out there. Uh, sometimes they make the news, sometimes they don't make the news. And what we've got here is uh, a few press releases, newspapers, articles that actually were grease fires in restaurants. And they do happen. If you look at the top right hand, the uh, fire spread through the duct work to the chin, uh, to the to the ceiling. Bottom, fire began in a ductwork. Over on the right, fire started in grease that was in the ductwork. So these are all grease fires that have you know pretty much taken down you know taken down buildings, closed restaurants for an extended period of time. Uh, there's there's all kinds of problems. And in general, when the grease fire is going to take down the building, they've not been properly uh, not properly maintained to keep the grease out. And they've also not had the proper material around the outside of the ducts to make them code compliant. So here we have a picture. Uh, this is actually of how the systems used to be back before the duct wraps started, Bruce duct wraps started to come around. Uh, they would take mineral wool board and just wrap it right around the duct itself. It wasn't really to a tested system, but at that point, there really wasn't any alternatives out there. Uh, there was no standard which had to be met. Uh, there have been a lot of code developments since the early 19, since around 1985 when this picture was taken, the systems. Uh, but what we ended up doing is we were the first to market with, with a grease wrap type of product. Uh, we had to work diligently to figure out what the parameters were. But we had identified that the grease duct fires actually run at about 2,000 degrees. Uh, and the mineral wool and gypsums, which were used, mineral wool here, to put enclosures around these ducts, they really, they, were, they weren't tested to a system. It was just kind of like, well, it's better than nothing, but you know, it really wasn't tested to a standard. And those systems would fail. So we ended up working with the laboratories, with UL and NFPA, uh, and some of the regional code authorities to work and on a acceptance criteria, which is based off of the UL 1978 uh, for the wrapping of the grease ducts. And initially the wraps really weren't accepted by the engineers and the code officials. But once we worked with UL and NFPA, uh, they, all, they all got on board and said, yep, we think this is probably, the, you know, this is definitely the way to go because it's listened, you know, it's definitely listened to a system. So we've got a little bit of a timeline here. Uh, 1985 is when we started to develop wraps for grease ducts. And about, about 1990, everything was pretty much matured. Uh, the wrapping of grease ducts was accepted by the codes, accepted by the, the, the testing laboratories. Uh, there are two standards out there. One was for the West Coast, one was for the East Coast. Uh, so, it, and they were slightly different than the material they use and, and their insulation methods. 2006, the International Code came around and decided to take on the, the two different standards. And uh, they went to, prior to the six code, they went to ASTM and said, you know, we've got this one system standard on the West Coast, we've got another standard on the East Coast. You kind of need to uh, help us out here and make one standard for the whole U.S. And then 2006, the ASTM and the ICC came out and they, they published the, at least in the ICC, they had published the ASTM E2336 test standard. Uh, so where we are now with the wrapping of ducts in the codes is they're all consistent with at least the international code is all consistent with if you got to wrap a grease duct with a field applied wrap you need to do it to this ASTM standard uh, which is E2336 uh, and that's a, it's got some internal hot out external cold conditions uh, it really doesn't give any criteria on what the product is or how it's supposed to be installed you just have to meet that ASTM standard tested at the national labs. Uh, and, and we have done that with our previous products and we've got that now with the, uh, the our next generation products we'll talk about shortly. But 
in 2013, we were the first to come to market with a, uh, a, a truly a, a butt joint system all around everywhere. Uh, the systems which are out there all require two layers of a product to pass. Uh, they're in general an inch and a half thick, so two layers of it of an inch and a half with about a three inches of insulation around the duct. Uh, there are where they come together. There's a joint uh, that joints really a, a weak link in the system and he can get through because if iron inside the duct expands he can get through that point and we came out with a really super efficient insulation and because of that we really didn't have to overlap at the joints and the heat wouldn't get through the joint we passed the standard and it's two layers inch and a half and it was truly a three inch thick system uh, 2021, which is now, we're coming out with this new product, FastRap XLS. Uh, and it's pretty slick. It's got a uh, black characteristic to it. It's lighter weight, it's more flexible. And I'm gonna get in a little bit of the, uh, of the code language here, just to give you an idea, the reason why we actually need to be, need to be wrapping these ducts in the first place. Uh, you know, fires do occur. Code works its way around the fires. Every time there's a fire, there's a disaster, the codes come in and they, they modify and change things around. But this is the actual code language on, on why we're really wrapping, why they need to wrap these ducts. Uh, and it occurs in the, the International Mechanical Code is really where everything gets specified as far as the, the wrapping of the grease ducts. How to assemble the grease ducts, what sizes, volume, CFM, distances, clearances, all that. What the code says is that if you're running one of these type one grease ducts from a restaurant through a building, you need to keep that duct 18 inches away from, from combustibles. And if you can do that, then you don't need to wrap the duct, you need to do anything. Uh, however, you can't keep it 18 inches away from combustibles. And the reason they've got 18 is that if this grease, they're assuming that if this grease fire within the duct, duct's gonna get super, you know, white hot, cherry red, it's gonna radiate heat, and if you're 18 inches away, they're assuming it's it, it's not gonna start any fires if you've got any combustible materials within, or past the 18 inches. If you're closer, closer than 18 inches, you're gonna, have, you're gonna have a problem and you're not gonna meet code. So what the code usually does is they give you a condition and say you need to have 18 inches or you need to have something but then they'll give you they'll give you some wiggle room and give you some some exceptions and some other so really some other options and the other options are in the shaft enclosure aspect around these grease ducts and they basically say the grease ducts you got to have 18 inches of clearance right here and if you can't have 18 inches of clearance then you can use Gypsum, you can build a, a shaft wall assembly around the duct and the distance between the duct itself and the first layer of sheetrock needs to be six inches around all surfaces. Uh, and that's, that's a code compliance system. However, it's not really used, it's not really used or practical a lot in just construction design because it just, it takes up a lot of room. Uh, if you're putting a shaft around that duct itself, it's really the only thing that can be in that duct. You can't have any other mechanicals, no piping, no wires, uh, no PVC. It's just a duct purely dedicated to the, the grease duct itself, or shaft dedicated to the grease duct. And from a design aspect, the architects are like, no way, that sucks up too much space, think of another option. Well, the other option is in the exceptions here. And they, uh, basically it says, you can cover the duct on all sides with a listed and labeled grease duct enclosure material, which has been tested in accordance with ASCM P2336. That's what I referenced earlier. Uh, and the requirements of clearance shall be in accordance with the clearance of the listing and the materials and the products or method. So basically what this whole page here says is that you got a grease duct, you need to maintain 18 inches. We realize you can't do that. Your options are put a sheetrock shaft around it, but keep six inches between the duct and the sheetrock. Architect's gonna say, that's a big space sucker. I need a real estate, you can't do that. What are the other options? 
uh, in the exceptions area, you can wrap it with a product which is listed to E2336. And it doesn't say what the thickness is and doesn't say anything about what it's made out. Basically, if you pass this ASTM test, you get to play in the construction market. There's a couple of manufacturers out there that have products that do pass that test, where one of them we've got the better, you know, the, the best mousetrap out there. Slide a little bit further on, I'll, I'll actually show you why. So what we're doing now is a uh, we're introducing this fast wrap XLS 2021. We've we're commercializing it as as we speak. We've got it. Uh, we've got it uh, available in the market. Uh, uh, it's kind of unique features of the fast wrap XLS are that they. Uh, it's it's lighter weight than the other products. Um, in general, what we've been our fast our previous product, which we still have and plan on having it available in the marketplace for a while, FireMaster FastRap XL, uh, that comes in at about a six pounds per cubic foot density. Uh, what we have now is a uh, same same thickness, inch and a half thick, four point four pounds. Per cubic foot density, so it's 25% lighter. Uh, that they, uh, it's easier to install. Boxes are boxes are lighter, easy to move around. Uh, products more flexible around ductwork. Uh, flexibility is kind of and it's kind of a big deal for some of these applications because it's just uh, there's a there's a lot going on. There's never any space uh, involved in any of these, so they have a tendency to just want to. Um, use lighter, thinner, more flexible products. And that's really what we have going on here. Uh, it's totally encapsulated. Uh, it, it, what we we have encapsulated in a, a black matte finish aluminized scrim prevents water, moisture, and grease from ingressing. And it, pour, and it also helps to avoid the, uh, the promotion of, of mode growth because of this. The black aspect of it, the uh, the black matte finish, makes it really less visible in a lot of the uh, a lot of the new open concept designs. Uh, if you if you don't need the black matte, that's fine. You know, if it's just hidden behind a ceiling, nobody's ever going to look at it. The you still have the benefit of the uh, of the lighter weight, easier installed. The, the these installed wrap. The, the density is always light. Density is always going to be there. Everybody always likes that. We're able to achieve the uh, the pass the ASTM test with the same thickness and lighter density product because it's a it's a new it's a new fiber technology we're using to make fiber in, inside the product in itself. It's much better insulated than what we previously had, and we can just cut down the density of this. So it's it's meets the test with the lab. Lots lighter, more flexible. It's just it's just all around a good product. Uh, zero clearance and combustible and grease ducts, just like our old product. Two hour fire rated protection on grease and air ducts, just like just like our old products. Just lighter, more flexible. Uh, the applications are mostly uh, a lot of in grease ducts, but there are also applications in HVAC uh, air ducts, which uh, are Required to be dampered, or and they can't use the dampers, or in applications where uh, dampers are actually going to be restricted, such as stairwell pressurization and uh, fume hood exhaust duct work. Uh, what we're looking at here is a comparison of our our old our previous product, the FireMass FastRap XL, to the FastRap XLS. Uh, they're both two hours grease and air enclosures. Same thing here, both inch and a half thick. Six pound density for the uh, the old XL or point point XLS. That's a 27% uh, weight reduction from the uh, three quarters of a pound per square foot, 5.5 or 0.55 pounds per square foot. Box density is a lot less. I mean, we're basically 10 pounds less a box, 37 and a half, 27 and a half. Uh, on air ducts, uh, we can use the inch and a half thick. 4.4, or we've actually we've got a listing for a little bit thinner, one and a quarter inch on that, which even makes it lighter and even even more flexible for for the air duct applications. 
Uh, this is a product data sheet. Uh, we've, we've got that. We currently have had it out for quite a you know, few months now, quite a few months. And uh, this is what we were giving to the customers and contractors for submittal to the architects and engineers. And this is just a little bit of a comparison of the XLS installation details with the weight, uh, how to treat the joints, because there's a lot of confusion out there as the proper installation of the different products in the marketplace. Uh, the products that are out there now, uh, they're all silver, except for this XLS. Now we've got it in matte black, which again looks, looks pretty sweet. And, but they're all inch and a half thick. They all come in the 25 foot, sometimes a little, little bit shorter. Uh, the, the weight per square foot, you know, we're, we're much lighter than a, uh, the other two products out there. The big deal is how the products actually get installed. And they, uh, this is all in manufacturer's literatures, but uh, I mean, ours is a compression at, at all joints, a true compression. This, this is, would be an image of it, where the product really, there, there's no overlap at all involved in this. Uh, another system out there, <clears throat> looking at product B, uh, the joints have to be at the top corners and the joints, exterior joints, they must be taped. And what you'll see is there's a joint here on the first layer, there's a joint here on the second layer. That's really not very practical for the installation of the product is when the contractor is installing it, they don't line it up with the top corner. They typically would drape it halfway down one side, all the way down the other and just end up wrapping it around and work and then bringing it, bringing it together. Top corners, Pretty much, it's it's a big pain, and this system here has all the exterior joints, uh, the transverse and longitudinal. They all require to be taped, and that's very difficult with all the tight spacing when this thing's up against the ceiling or up against the wall to get tape all around it. So I'd, there's a, a a high potential for it not to be installed per the listing if things are going to be in the way in the job site. Another product out there uh, that basically is, again, inch and a half thick, a little bit higher in density. Uh, the total thickness required for this is gonna be six inches because they actually are, have uh, several overlaps going on. So it's inch and a half, inch and a half, which is three, another inch and a half, what's four and a half, and going down the length is another inch and a half with an overlap, which takes you up to six. That's a pretty big space requirement. Uh, so the there's no taping on this system, but it's just it's just a lot of overlaps, a lot of thickness, a lot of material, a lot of weight, just a lot of potential for conflicts in the field where the, what we're presenting is just a nice, simple inch and a half, two layers, true three inch thick product for going around the duct with no restrictions as to where the joints have to be or anything like that. And this is basically our detail of the drawing how it's installed. Uh, once again, you get the butt joint. This shows in the top, but really could be anywhere they want. Uh, banding on both sides of the joint itself. Two layers for the grease duct application. Uh, this is our standard detail. Uh, and we've got, uh, we're not required of the joints on the top or to be taped. It can just be anywhere you want, like other products have that. So since since we had this product in the market, I mean, this is this is a relatively new slide to this presentation, and they, uh, we've been asked, you know, several questions about the product itself, and which weren't presented in the original in the earlier slides. Uh, some of these questions, Jared might be looking, looking at them right now. I'm thinking, oh, they, they they've come through. People are asking questions about these, so maybe we'll preempt some of the questions. Uh, once of it, when is it available? Yeah, it's available now. Uh, you know, what tape is to be used? You know, any any tape which meets the UL 723 or ASTM E84, uh, they're all like, they're acceptable. Uh, they may be black, they may not be black. I mean, the, it, if it's in a, uh, a hidden plenum space or hidden or hidden area behind the ceiling, and they're not, they don't really, the, the, the black's not really gonna, gonna matter that much. They, they're using it because of the, light density it's much easier to install 
then maybe they don't want to use a black tape. Maybe they just want to use what they, they have on their truck, just a standard silver tape. Uh, that's allowed as long as it's 723 or E8, E84. So uh, if they want to use a black tape, we've, we've got a black tape available uh, very shortly on that, or they can use a, any a black tape, which is 723 E84. Uh, what if the tape's not visible? Well, I think I kind of just might have preempted that. If the tape's not visible, you can use any kind of, you know, any non-black tape you want. Does it install differently for grease ducts? And the answer differently than our previous offering. And it, and it does not. It's, it's an identical installation methods as I previously stated. Two layers, butt joints, joints can go wherever you want, and the joints do not need to be taped. Doesn't install differently on air ventilation ducts? Possibly. Uh, really depends on which standard they uh, they, they need to meet. Uh, there's a couple of different standards out there for air for air duct requirements. Uh, we suggest you call myself or Scott Higginbottom, whose contacts we had earlier, and uh, just let us know what application you're looking for, uh, what the architect or the mechanical engineer is specifying for the for the ventilation ducts and we'll point you in the right direction. How is FireMaster FastDrop XLS packaged? Well, it's the same same way the uh, our previous product, the X FireMaster XL is packaged. It's 24 inches wide, 300 inches long, uh, two foot by 25 foot. Uh, 48's plan, we're bringing that in the uh, in the not too distant future, but for now we've got the other 24 inches being up, you know, available to market. And that's really what most people are buying anyway. Uh, so kind of wrap it all up here. I mean, we've been in this market for 30, 35 years. Uh, we've been the first in there. We've kind of innovated with a, uh, several different systems, the, uh, the, the butt joint system, the inch, inch and a half, the uh, low density. We've, all, we've been in the forefront of a lot of these changes. Uh, we've innovated the industry uh, when no other tested system today really is, is as thin or as light as, as we are. I previously stated we're 25% lighter than any of the other similar products in the market. Uh, we've got an inch and a quarter for the air ducts versus a you know inch and a half for other similar products in the market. It's a much simpler, easier installation than any of any other products are out there, just because of everything I've said, you know, we can locate the the joints wherever you want, you don't need to tape the joints, you don't have to overlap the joints. It's just, it's 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 a lot easier. It's more flexible because the density is down too. Uh, all the systems install differently. You've seen that on that one sh on that one comparison sh sheet we have with the different columns. Uh, they don't, none of them install the same. I mean, we're, but ours is the most flexible and, and contractor friendly because you even, as I said, joints, no tape, all that. Uh, the black coil enca encapsulation, it's exceedingly pleasing to look at. And they, uh, it's in the open concept designs, it's, it's, it's gonna look a lot better than that, than what we've got with the silver shiny aluminum. Uh, we've had the, you know, we do get inquiries, you know, when the silver stuff was installed, you know, can we paint it? And that's just one extra step that they really don't have to worry about, have them tape everything off and, to paint the ductwork, which are already going to come in black anyway, uh, and the, the black tape is 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 available. So that's pretty much the end of what I'm what I'm going to say here. Hopefully, there's a whole bunch of questions, or maybe if I did a good job, there's no questions. But I guess we'll we'll see shortly. So I'm I'm, I'm done with my official part of the presentation for now. Thanks, David. Um... Do have a we do have a few questions um so you didn't answer all of them uh <laughs> um first question we have can uh can the xls and xl be used interchangeably um for example a first layer a first layer xl second layer xls can you mix the two on the same duck uh, i'll let scott take over that i've been doing all the talking so we'll see we'll let him do some of that yeah. Hi, Jared. Thanks. Uh, thanks for allowing us the opportunity to talk to you guys about this. And David, good job with the presentation. 
Yeah, so one thing that David did not mention here is that the FastRap XLS is listed with Intertech. FastRap Excel is listed with UL. So a little bit different with the certifications between the two. Certainly both products are, are listed, but they do have different uh, certification bodies. So we're a little bit hesitant to tell you to do that, to put one on top of the other. Uh, we would say it's okay to put part of a duct with just fast wrap Excel and then stop and then start on a different part of the duct with XLS, for example. But I think it's a, we're a little bit concerned if you wrap right over the top because you're, it's, uh, you're confusing Intertech with you will if you're putting one on top of the other and if there would happen to be a liability concern, I think those guys may have an issue with that. So again, if you if you butt one product to the to the other, I think we can uh, we can help you out with that, give you an engineering judgment, tell you that that's an okay thing to do. But to put the uh, again, put the second layer over the top of the first layer is a little bit more difficult thing when it comes to our certificating certificate bodies. Does that make sense? Yeah, thanks, Scott. Um, next question, are, are black bands available? Yeah, I'll take this one also. So uh, you can use stainless steel or carbon banding for this. Both are allowed. So I think uh, stainless steel is typically going to be silver. Carbon's typically going to be black. So either of those are allowed uh, with either the grease duct application or ventilation application. Next question, uh, do joints between blanket pieces along a duct run need to be taped? Uh, so for, for the grease duct application, you do not have to do any taping at all. Uh, so for our new, uh, so we, we do have certification to ASTM 2816 ventilation for, uh, this is a little bit complicated, maybe a little more complicated question than you ask, but for ventilation listings to ASTM 2816, then some taping of those joints are required, but certainly not for grease ducts, uh, for the grease duct application, but for duct A and duct B on ventilation duct, you would have to do some taping of joints. All right, next question. Um, are, the, are the Morgan logo and graphics going to be visible on the black wrap? In some pictures in the presentation, that appeared all black, and in others, the white uh, print is visible. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, the that's a, someone's very uh, observant to have seen that. I think the the one picture may have been a laboratory test that may have been taken at taken at uh, at Intertech or some of the the testing that was performed, uh, and there may not have been any markings on that product. Uh, so the product that you would receive as a customer will have markings because that is a requirement of Intertech to have to have a marking. So it does have a silver uh, Morgan Advanced material. It has the Intertech ETL marking and and some other um, some other wording on the print. Um, but, uh, so, so I think the, the, some of the logos or some of the images you saw on the screen is, is fairly accurate, um, that it will have, uh, we tried to minimize the amount of marking to, so it would be black and, uh, aesthetically pleasing as, as possible and to minimize the amount of markings, but there will be some markings on the product. All right, I believe this is the last question. Um, is the foil-faced 
um, wrap going to be phased out? And if so, when? David, you want that one? Ah, oh, sure, I'll take that. I was waiting for you to see if I, you know, can't give me something to do here. And I was just sitting back and uh, listening to you do a good job. Uh, we have no intention really of a, uh, eliminating the silver product at this point, which is the Firemaster Fast Track XL. Uh, it, it may happen in the future. Uh, we don't know. I mean, it's hard to say if this thing, if, if you know, it's hard to say where the market's going to go, but uh, at this point in time, we we see no in, no immediate requirements or intentions of eliminating the uh, the fast wrap the XL silver product. So both are still going to be commercially available uh, for at least another at least another year or two. The other uh, silver is going to be at least another year or two, and maybe even longer. All right. Uh, what one one more question just came through? Um, do you do you know of a fire rated system for grease ducts in which in which exit the building envelope are located on roof? We had a system that ran for about sixty feet along a roof line before connecting to an exhaust hood. The question. So uh, do you know of a fire rated system for grease ducts which exits the building envelope and are located on the roof? Uh, I would say, yeah, that would be ours, uh, what we're talking about. But the, the, the way the code's worded, the, the code basically says that the grease duct needs to be 18 inches away from combustibles. Uh, and it doesn't say internal or external. So there's there's a lot of a lot of questions as to well everybody knows they need to wrap the duct inside the building, uh, but once the duct exits the building, then the question is what do we do then? Uh, and the code's not clear. Well, the the, the code I, I believe it's it's clear just by the absence of defining interior or exterior. Uh, the there's some some people are saying, well, it's outside the building, we don't need to do anything. But the fire inside the duct, if if something's within 18 inches, it's going to burn, whether it's a uh, inside the building or whether it's some a, a rubber roof membrane outside the building. So it's you know, I I believe the language of the code basically says that if if you're with if something's within 18 inches of uh, if it's combustible, it's within 18 inches of the duct, uh, even if it's outside the building. You need to do something about it, you know. And and I went through earlier the option. You put a sheetrock box around it with the airspace and horizontal. That's just a nightmare, and it's really it's, it's not going to work well. So then the the other thing is, well, you know, wrap it with a you know, one of the a, a wrap that meets this ASTME two three three six. Once you're outside, you've got weather issues too. So you're going to have to wrap it, and then you're going to have to to weatherproof it when you're outside. If that duct is more than 18 inches away, like if it's up a couple of feet off of their, away from the roof membrane, uh, I don't think you need to do anything. Uh, but at the end of the day, the AHJ gets to make the call as to whether it should be wrapped or, or, or should not be wrapped at that point. But I, I kind of think the, the, the code by the absence of saying, once you're outside, you don't need to do anything, means that uh, you know, 18 inches is inside and outside. So, and for products that do that, you know, the, uh, the ones that the wraps that meet the 233, I guess, 2336, I believe, you know, would meet that, um, you know, that requirement in the code for the duct exterior of the building if the inspector requires it. Thanks, David. Um, and thanks uh, to Scott as well and everyone else at, uh, at Morgan and Thermal Ceramics. I uh, appreciate you taking time today. Um, to everybody on the call, uh, we will um, we did record this and we will post um, the recording on the on distributioninternational.com website. Uh, within the next couple of days, you just uh, go to distributioninternational.com, go up to resources and then click on DI 101 webinars and you should see the a link to the recording right there. Thanks everybody for joining. Uh, have a wonderful, uh, happy and safe Thanksgiving um, and uh, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks.
Thanks everybody for attending. Thank you.